So we just took a turn into uh, love poetry. Okay. Well, this is a poem called Time is Love. Time is Love. I got tired of um, hearing people say time is money. You know, fuck that. Time is love. Let's not be pulled down into the maelstrom of our grief and failure, nor imagine ourselves without help alone. As I move through the days, awareness of your presence moderates my confusion. My thoughts are kinder knowing we walk together. Beyond anything we've given or failed to give, we have honored each other with the most precious gift we the living have on this earth, our time. Time is love in which all our dedicated moments of attention and service of heart become a garden, opening petals of beauty in that wedding where our souls are still speaking their vows. I'm gonna pick, uh, continue with the love. And uh, a couple of years ago, I was writing poems triggered by Andrew Wyeth's Helga paintings. Mm. And so there was one painting that was called Lovers. Mm. And so this is a poem that came while I dealt with that, that uh, particular painting, but it has nothing to do with Helga. Wyeth's picture, Lovers, makes me think of my wife back home and so much more. When I left Seattle, my granddaughter kissed her hand and threw me a kiss with a wide arching arm. As I left, my son and I said goodbye with bear hugs. When he was six years old, I let him sit on my lap and steer the pickup down the two lane highway that passed the little bighorn battleground. Sitting Bull loved his people too. At the frantic council before the battle, he walked in, bare assed and back, backwards. Everything cracked. Love and prudence re entered, and his people knew that they could bear the fight. As I approached the Black Hills, the white ground, the black pines, and the blue sky pulled at my heart the way a woman pulls at taffy. I stretched my ride and detoured to Devil's Tower, the bear's house. The land rolled in melting snow like a cinnamon bear shaking off winter. My mind flew over the red stones and sprawled over the land's thighs and the tan breasts of the mysterious waking woman of the earth. Timothy, you know people who move from lover to lover. You couldn't bear it. Your deepest love is in your family. Old lovers remain in your mind because the strings of love connect all souls. Your wife knows she plays her music that way. Mm. Wow. Well, that had about a hundred different directions to go in. Um, Tim, was that is that a is that in the guzzle form? Yeah, it is. Okay, all right. <laughs> I've got my get out of jail free card there. <laughs> this is uh, this is a uh, this is a guzzle. It has nothing to do with uh, with uh, well, maybe it does. Does it nothing to do with subject matter, Tim's? It's it's called paradise, and you you got the picture with guzzles. Um, they have these repetitions. Uh, so paradise is the word here. The, the, the first use of paradise is the town in California where there was terrible wildfires a couple of winters ago. Okay, it's called paradise. It's almost winter 
and the wildfires moving on to another town. Tonight, rain is falling on the ashes of paradise. Women and children approach with hands empty, except for their hunger for safety. Razor wire and tear gas bar them from paradise. A bird of prey hovers over the burnt planet. Cars lie tipped on their sides, abandoned, rusting along the road to paradise. The ruler installed by oligarchs orders soldiers to fire on the asylum seekers. Men shout in the streets, demanding paradise. Refugees warm themselves at a scavenged wood fire. At such gatherings, there's always a scruffy person with a guitar singing of paradise. A woman holds her lit candle at the curbside vigil. Another joins her, then another. Together, they are rebuilding paradise. I found an, uh, I, another poem in the guzzle form, and this one is Paradise Disappeared Beneath. <laughs> Whoa. In the 40s in a blizzard, a bomber had to land on the river. As the crew and town folk watched from a roadhouse, the ice broke and the plane and the bombs settled into cold Mississippi mud. Paradise disappeared beneath our radar after Hiroshima. Ionesco saw the dread. Oldenburg brought plastic into art. Loneliness grew and an empty green wilderness became our heaven. In the 70s, when I quit inspecting cattle, no one missed me. My search for other men's lies had killed something inside me. So I visited Papantla and watched Voladores spiral to earth from heaven. Beneath Tamborteetla's waterfall, I dove into a rust-colored pool and emerged with coffee bean odors lifting from my waste-stained skin. I didn't return to Veracruz. I went deeper into the mountains. I've been told love always holds below what will grow above. Like old Irish potatoes, it survives below a battlefield and neither hooves nor Humvees can disturb it. Timothy, look at the water lily roots beneath the skim ice. Never forget that there will be fragrant summer nights when your heart can bob on the waves of love's aromas. Hmm. Tim, what do we have? A couple poems left, maybe? That's it. Yeah. I'm just it? Okay. Well, we can't end on that kind of, I mean, no. <laughs> no, no. I'm going to do a drastic, uh, I'm going to do a drastic mood change here. <laughs> yep. All right. But I, uh, but I noticed there's, there was some art in that poem. Yep. So uh, I'm going to read you a prose poem called Art Car. Uh, everybody know what an art car is? You know, it's a car, it's an old car that, you know, somebody decides they're going to fix up and, you know, paint zebra stripes on or, you know, completely cover with wine bottle corks or mirrors or, you know, it's great. It's fantastic whenever you see one. So this is a winter poem from up here in North Country with a little bit of uh, visual relief. It's called Art Car. Driving on a gloomy winter worn day with gloomy thoughts underslept, uninspired, tired in body and spirit, 
the freeway, a succession of gray or black frost encrusted pods hurtling and whizzing around my automotive plod. My mood brightens before a beat later. I realize why, ahead in the right hand lane, an art car studded with small colorful objects. I step on the gas, come up alongside, see glued to trunk, roof and hood, hundreds, possibly thousands of toys and tchotchkes, dolls, trolls, smurfs, a mounted army of them, their green, orange and purple hair trailing in wind like a rainbow cotton candy comet. Plastic letters glued to the driver's door decree. Every day is a parade. <laughs> Every day is a parade. Do you hear that, soul? How could we have forgotten? Art car, today you alone, among the enslaved multitudes, catch the joyful cosmic memo of freedom. As you cut your jolly swath, through the gray workaday traffic. Please throw us your tow line of color and whimsy to pull us along with you, where we can all join your diminutive marching band, streamers of bright coarse hair fluttering past our ears. <laughs> uh, uh, the zaniness is wonderful. And so since it's a bit of zaniness and a a bit of art that made me think of. Oh, could I, could I just interject one thing quick? Yeah. Uh, I found out a couple of years after I wrote this poem, just by completely by chance that that car belonged to somebody that I used to know back when we were uh, working for the same arts organization. And we, we hadn't seen each other for years and years and I didn't know what happened to her. And it turned out it was her car, so. <laughs> right. uh, that relationships <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry to interrupt no that's just fine no mm. Uh, mm. so I'm, I'm gonna read this poem uh and it's uh about more about folk art and this is called a wooden cutout of an old woman's backside <laughs> now up here for a number of years out in the country there were all of these rumps in the in the gardens in the flower gardens and everything and i found out that it was the man who started that was about a 45 year old bachelor who lived with his mother and uh he got he got some sort of payment for all of those and then they went on and they were all over for a while a wooden cutout of an old woman's backside. In Eden, Minnesota, where County Road 16 slithers through the corn rows, a painted image gives new homage to the mysterious power of mother. In a garden beside the house, a rump stands bent near the lilies. It's a cutout of wood an irreverent, an irreverent wink from Granny's wild ass nature. This new country ritual shuns the bathtub Madonna for an elderly arse in the berries. <laughs> so thank you guys. Thank you. And we'll uh we'll move on to this to the story or whatever's next. <laughs>